Hello everyone, so today I'm in Istanbul with Keith, my real estate agent here. So as a lot of you know, last year I bought a few properties in Turkey. And today, Keith is gonna show us so two properties. One property that one of his clients recently bought for the purposes of obtaining Turkish citizenship here. And another property which you feel is a decent deal in today's environment. Yeah, it comes as a lead and we're gonna go check it out. Cool, okay, so we're gonna go check it out. You haven't been yet. I haven't seen it myself, but it comes from one of my staff and he says it's a good lead, so. We'll okay, so we're gonna go do the due diligence, see whether it's good or not, um, because I have a lot of clients who want Turkish citizenship. The price went up to $400,000 in terms of the investment required. Online, if you Google Turkish citizenship by investment real estate, you'll end up with all these companies that are selling completely non sensical real estate in new builds like an hour and a half two hours away from the center of Istanbul that are totally overpriced that may look good but when you sell them in a few years time you'll notice that actually you lost 30 40 percent of your money because they're giving out commissions of eight ten percent to these agents that you find on the on the first page of Google so what we're gonna see here today is the reality of the real estate market here in Istanbul, actual listings that Turkish people would buy, would go for. Um, so we're gonna go check out this one and then do all of the numbers in terms of rental yields, et cetera. So tell us about this, uh, this building, Keith. Okay, uh, this is an eight year old building. It has an elevator. There's no parking. You can park on the street. There's also paid parking not far from here. Uh, we're a couple of minutes away from a main street. It's okay. a nice, quiet, residential neighborhood. Yeah, very quiet here. Yeah. Okay, so we're in the neighborhood of Kahane. Can you tell us a bit more about the, the neighborhood? Yeah, Kahane is one of those neighborhoods in the last couple of years. You hear a lot about it. A lot of urban regeneration going on here. Uh, sort of middle class, upper middle class neighborhood. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a real area for development in the city. Very central. So yeah, and Kahane is interesting because it has the latest direct metro line to Istanbul airport. So that's like what, a five minute walk from here? Seven minute walk from here? Uh, to the metro for the airport, I believe it's about eight to 10 minutes walk from cool. here. Yeah. And then you have a direct line to the airport, which is, uh, which is a big plus. So this apartment is what is, how, how much was this here? Give us the metrics. Yeah, this is a small two bedroom. It's about 65 square meters. You have the living area here. You can see out the window, it's got a view of some of the skyscrapers downtown. Uh, and that's Levant actually up there in the distance. So we're, we're really not far from Levant either, uh, which is the CBD of Istanbul. So this is the living room, you have a little kitchen in here. This one it doesn't really need any renovation. In fact, we haven't renovated it. Maybe at some future point to add value, you could do some renovations here, like a new kitchen, new yeah. washroom. But for right now, the, the gentleman who purchased this just said, get it rentable, rent it out. Because he wants to make the $400,000 mark That's without right. doing renovations. Because yeah. renovations do not count when you go for the citizenship by investment program. Uh, so it's really how much real estate you buy. Yeah, so this is his first property, approximately 200K for two units. We'll see the upstairs in a okay, second. Okay, so it's $200,000, um, yep. like with fees, without fees? That's everything all in, about 200K. So stamp duty, stamp duty agency commissions, fees, you commissions, yep. everything, 200 cash. Yeah. This apartment and another one. Yeah, there's one upstairs. Let's go see well, it. Yeah, so two separate entrances entirely here. Okay, so two rental units for 200K. Two, two rental okay. units, yeah. That's, uh, that's interesting. Now we'll go upstairs. Upstairs is uh, a little bit rougher. It's definitely, I think before uh, this gentleman wants to resell, it would be a good idea to do some renovation up here. Yeah. It's rentable as is, but I think you can add value. This could be quite a nice space up here, but it does need a little bit more work especially the washroom and the kitchen. Kitchen's almost a throwaway right now. Yeah, this, this needs to. And the, and the washroom as well. But you know, there'll be tenants for this. This would rent for about $400 when you adjust for the- And the one Lira downstairs? Deflation. And the one downstairs, $500 approximately. Okay, and these are, that's not like how much you would rent out now. 
but it, it's what you estimate it would turn out to be over the year. Yeah, and I'm sort of calculating in a bit of a depreciation in the lira. Cool. I hope I'm wrong. And I, th I think this is really important because a lot of agents, you know, the ones who sell you the crappy overpriced units in these new builds will tell you, oh, you're going to get a rental yield of uh, $700, etc. Sure, you might get that in January, by, but by December, you're actually getting only like 500. So when Keith gives us estimates, well, we try. I mean, it's always hard to. to calculate in these things. And, you know, we, we also hope that they're not for uh, major depreciations. That throws off our numbers as well. But okay. uh, we try to be accurate. Okay, so $500 per month on average for the year downstairs. Upstairs, $400 per month. That is about $900 per month. It's a bit over $10,000 a year. What would be the occupancy rate here? Uh, this would be pretty much always occupied. I mean, as, as yeah. soon as we put a price on it, it's ready to go and sort out the few issues we have to do here. We'll find a tenant almost right away. So in the numbers, we'll put 95, 98%, something like that. Yeah. Because, I mean, we're in central Istanbul. It's a city of 15, 20 million people. Um, it's not some like village in Nicaragua or something. There's, there's always tenants. If the price is right, you have tenants the next day. Yeah. Even before your tenants leave, you have the next ones lined up. Yeah. So that's, that's a positive. You, you, it's never empty unless you're messing up with the pricing. Um, what about, so expenses, um, property management, how much do you charge for property management? Because you do Ten, that too. 10% for the property management. Uh, okay. Then you have your yearly taxes, which are very minimal. Uh, What's so the property tax? I think it would be about $150 a year. I know it's hard for people to believe, but nice. that's right. Cool. <laughs> Holding what about, costs are very what about here. finding tenants? Finders Find, finding tenants, the tenants pay that, not, not the owner. Also, uh, the building fee is paid by the tenants, not the owner, unless it's unoccupied, of course. Cool. So again, this is really important. So you look at the gross yield, you're at a bit over a, around 5% gross. Typically when you have 5% gross in a lot of markets, the, the, the number goes down a lot because you have to pay common charges as the owner. You need to pay finder's fees for tenants. You need to pay a lot of maintenance because maintenance is expensive. You need to pay very high property taxes, etc. In Turkey, there's none of this. You just pay the 10% management fee. The tenants pay Keith to find the unit. So yep. it's like the other way around. Yep. Um, so that doesn't go into your cost structure. Property taxes are absolutely minimal. And even the building fees for the elevator, the cleaning, et cetera, maintenance, the tenant pays. Um, so you as a landlord, you're paying very little, just the property tax and maintenance. How much would you tell your investors just to put aside every year in terms I mean, of I, I normal maintenance? I mean, I always tell people to put aside 10% of the annual revenue, but it, you know, if the apartment's in pretty good shape, you'll, you'll never spend that. But uh, yeah. you know, it's good for a rainy day. Yeah. Cool. 5% will probably do it, even less. Yeah, I think five, $500 yeah. Yeah. a year is, yeah. is, is good enough. Um, yeah. Cool. And then you would tell the owner to do a bit of a renovation before selling in I, I would definitely years. do that, yeah. Great, because when you do the citizenship by investment here, um, you have to hold the property for three years um, before you can sell it or else you lose the citizenship, or you can sell after five years and also not pay any capital gains taxes, which is quite interesting. So overall, even though the gross yield is about 4%, you end up with a net yield of over 4%, so 4.3 or so roughly. Um, we'll see on, on the, the exact numbers when we do them afterwards which is not too bad at all, especially when you get a free passport out of it for, your, for you and your family and all of your descendants. So I think that's the play here for, for such an apartment, and it's liquid. Yep. Like yeah, if yeah. you were to sell it, how long would it take you to sell it? Oh, no time at all, really. I mean, again, it's price sensitive, but this kind of property, we can assume a pretty decent appreciation over the next three to five years. And when you put it on the market and you're, you're not going too high, uh, this kind of property sells locally pretty fast. Cool. Okay, great. So we are going to go check out the other property now. In which neighborhood is it? Uh, I'll have to double check, but I think it's, oh, it's just behind the Jeva here shopping mall. Okay. Uh, so part of Shishli, not Kadhani actually, going to a different uh, municipality, but it's also within uh, probably a 15, 20 minute walk or 10 minutes by car, depending on the traffic. Okay, cool. So we're going to go, you haven't seen it, so we're going to go check yep. it out and essentially do the due diligence, yeah, do yeah. estimates. 
yeah. and see what it is. Great. All right, cool. Okay. Let's do it. Great. So here we are in a nice area of Shishli. So there are some nice historical buildings around here. It's very residential. We're going to go see an apartment down the street right there. Fourth floor, no elevator, uh, but decent renovation, really big five bedrooms. We're going to have a look at it, do a bit of the numbers. This one would be an interesting candidate, actually. All right, so this pace is big. Yeah. Big and bright, I like it. Yeah, freshly renovated. Just some more installation to be done here. We got the Tiger working on it. Cool, so how many square meters, what price? Uh, this is about 160 square meters net, upstairs and downstairs combined. Yeah. And the price is 250K USD. 250K so USD. It's about, about $1,500 per square meter for a renovated unit. Yeah. That's an exceptionally good price for uh, being so close to the Osman Bay Metro. We're about a five minute walk. Uh, okay. Just two minutes to the main street, close to the Chantichet. I think we have five bedrooms in all here. So three bedrooms and two bathrooms downstairs. Yeah, a couple of, couple of bathrooms oh, nice, as well. Nice wardrobes in there. Got some storage space underneath here as well, underneath the stairs. Let's go upstairs. So this is a huge apartment. You so got a pretty nice view up here as well, which I like. Per square meter, that is, oh, nice view. Yeah. Okay, so this is one of the bedrooms. Why is there a second kitchen here? Well, we'll have to ask the designer. Uh, <laughs> I think you conceptualize as perhaps uh, nice. multiple generations living in the same space, as is often the case in the Arab and Iranian world. So you could have, uh, you know, how we have a granny suite in the, in the West. Uh, you might have the parents living up here or the children living up here. And so you don't have to go downstairs every time you want to cool. make a sandwich. So this is very unfamiliar for Westerners to have two kitchens like this. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, the market here. I, I wouldn't say it, it is the market here. That, that would be a bit of a, a, okay. a stretch, but you know, it's definitely not a, a negative to have the second kitchen. Okay, cool. Yeah, because uh, typically Westerners would have done, I don't know, like a playroom or an office yeah. area, something, you know? Yeah, I would, um, have, I would have put in a smaller kitchen. I don't think you need to do the whole bit up here. Just something where you could make tea and sandwich, but this okay. is fine. It's not so elaborate either, the kitchen. So Keith, what are the numbers? Okay, uh, 160 square meter net apartment. 250k USD. I think if you look at the yield here, you're looking at a minimum of $1,200 as a rental. Uh, perhaps a little, you know, $1,400, maybe a bit more if you furnish it up. So good long-term potential. If you wanted to do the location, you could also do short-term as well. So between five and a half and seven percent gross yield. Yeah. So net yield, some, something between five and 6% net yields, yeah. roughly. Because again, it's, it's very cheap per square meter for a fully renovated place in this neighborhood. But why? Because it has such a large surface, but there's definitely a market for it. Yeah, I think it, you know, when you get over 120 square meters, the square, you know, there's some compression with the square meter price and you wouldn't expect it to be as high as like a 50 square meter apartment. However, as, as you said, in Istanbul, it's a little bit different than, say, a central European country where, you know, you have a lot of single people. Here, families, big, yeah. big spaces are always uh, easy to fill up, actually. Yeah, yeah. So the occupancy rate here, I would expect, would be very high. Yeah, it would be high. There's, it would not be affected. Just people wouldn't say, oh, it's too big. You can't yeah. find a market for this. That's not the case in Istanbul at all. Yeah, cool. So... Look, this, is, this gives us an idea of what the market is currently in Istanbul if you want to do the citizenship by investment program. So as you can tell, the two properties that we saw are overall much better value than what the guys online are trying to sell you with these new builds an hour and a half away from the center where for $200,000 you'll get, a, I don't know, a one bedroom or a tiny two bedroom in the middle of nowhere. So this is, these are actual market related prices here in Istanbul, and you get some decentish yield. Um, personally, I find that 
what you like to propose to your clients, which is to buy one property in Istanbul, one property in Izmir. I think this is the sweet spot because in Izmir, 200K, you have a very nice new apartment in a new building with stunning sea views of the, the whole bay. Um, so they're very complementary in one's portfolio. So I like this approach that you have. Yeah, I, I really like it as well. And we've had some success with that model. And it's just a little bit more bang for your buck in this mirror. You get that kind of property, maybe that you identify more. It's got this great sea view. And then something more pragmatic for the Istanbul investment. So I wrote two articles, one article on the real estate investment market here in Istanbul, the neighborhoods that are interesting, that are not interesting. The same thing in Izmir, the two articles are in the link below. And if you want to get in touch with Keith for all your real estate needs here in both in Istanbul and in Izmir, feel free to get in touch with him. There's a link with more information on his services as well as his email. Keith, always a pleasure, eh? Thank you. Hey. Make sure to download my free ebook, 12 Mistakes to Avoid When Investing in International Real Estate which you can find on my website, link below, and feel free to follow me on Instagram at The Wandering Investor. I look forward to hearing from you.